Okay, Kansas State at Texas. We got to talk about this one because Texas is coming into this game 7-1. They're without Quinn Ewers, and there's still a lot of questions about Malik Murphy and can he get the job done at Texas. I've even seen things like, hey, should they start Arch? Because maybe Arch feels slighted that he's not starting in the absence of Quinn Ewers. Listen, uh, the media is really trying to run with this Texas stuff right now. And I believe it makes for interesting headlines. So we got to talk about the Kansas State Wildcats going to Austin at 11 o'clock on big noon kickoff, Fox, whatever you want to call it. Number 23, Kansas State versus number seven, Texas. So number seven, Texas. They're about to take on the Kansas State Wildcats. The Kansas State Wildcats that, hey, listen, they have played spoilers with the top Big 12 teams in the past. Last year, won this conference, and Kansas State, listen, they're trying to work their way back in to getting to the Big 12 championship game. Right now, they are currently sitting at 4-1, and one, tied with Texas, Oklahoma State, Iowa State, and Oklahoma as 4-1, and one, basically for the best in the conference. And if Kansas State or Texas Whoever wins this game, they're going to put themselves in prime position to go out there and win this conference. Now, the question is, is Kansas State going to be able to walk into Austin and ruin the chances for Texas to make a Big 12 championship game? Because that is the expectations for Texas. I know some people will tell you Texas needs to make a playoff this year. No, Texas needs to get to the Big 12 championship game, and they need to win it. That is the expectation that Texas fans and Texas media will tell you in order for this team to be considered, continue to progress, that's what they need to do. If you go to the college football playoffs, that's just a cherry on the top. Now, Kansas State, they're coming in here with a two-quarterback system with Will Howard and Avery Johnson. Avery Johnson's being a little bit more mobile of a quarterback. Uh, Will Howard is still your dime thrower. I say dime thrower. He doesn't take care of the ball all that well, and we'll get to that here in a second. But with Texas missing Quinn Ewers, everything is still in front of them. They just are now in an elimination game with Kansas State, who's actually a decent team. Both teams are vying for the Big 12 championship spot. So, keys for Kansas State here, right? They don't need to be turning the ball over. Will Howard has gone three straight games without throwing a pick. However, he has a 2-1 to one touchdown to interception ratio, meaning he does make mistakes, and Texas can make you make mistakes. So, if you're Kansas State, you've got to take care of the ball to the best of your ability. And then additionally, point number two, you got to apply pressure to Malik Murphy and make him make tough decisions. If you want to create an upset in Austin against the number seven overall team in the country, you're going to have to apply pressure to a quarterback that's only starting his second game. Kansas State hasn't seen a lot of Malik Murphy. And so they're going to have to bring the hammer. They're going to have to make him uncomfortable. You might even have to try to flush him out of the pocket and make him use his legs. Got to make Malik Murphy beat you. That's the key. Can't be letting this running game run all over you. And that's kind of where we're going to go into the third point. You come to this game with the number 21 overall rushing defense, allowing 109.4 rush yards per game. Can you get the necessary stops against a good Texas run game? Texas has a very good run game. And Jonathan Brooks, one of the leaders here, at 144 carries, 923 yards, seven touchdowns. They've got... Cedric Baxter Jr., the true freshman, and they have an offensive line that can create those holes. If you're Kansas State, you have to be aggressive. You have to be able to drop these running backs in the backfield, create tackles for loss, and if you do that, you, co you create a day where Malik Murphy is uncomfortable. You probably walk out of this game as a winner. Now, for Texas, the key is simple. you got to stick to what you're good at without your starting quarterback, and that's going to be you got to run the ball, right? Jonathan Brooks has done an incredible job for you this year. Your offensive line has done a good job blocking for these running backs. You just need to run down Kansas State's throat. You need to control the time of possession. You can't let Kansas State control the time of possession. That's the problem Oklahoma has had with Kansas State over the past couple of years. That's how Chris Kleiman likes to play. And I'm sure Chris Kleiman, he's going to have some weird plays. He's going to have some, uh, some shifting. They're going to try to throw this Texas defense off a little bit. 
However, Texas also has one of the best rushing defenses in the country. I think Texas is only allowing, I think they're allowing either right at 100 or a little under 100 rushing yards per game. So if you're Texas, listen, Kansas State, they come in here with running backs that that's all they want to do. They just want to run the ball down your throat. So looking at the matchup here, ESPN Analytics, they're giving the Texas Longhorns a 66.8% chance to win this game. Kansas, 33.2. Obviously, it's being played in DKR, right, in Austin. However, they're only giving Texas a as a four-point favorite, which is telling me if this game's played on a neutral site, Kansas State's probably winning it. Or if it's played in Manhattan, Kansas State probably wins this game. Over-under is set at 49.5. Kickoff is going to be 64 degrees. Beautiful football weather. Beautiful football weather. You look at the season leaders, obviously, without Quint Ewers, Kansas State's got the quarterback advantage. Rushing game, I'd give it to Texas. Receiving yards, listen, Texas has got a slew of wide receivers, and they got a tight end, and I believe his name is Jordan Whittington. Yeah, that man can make plays too. So, Texas has got weapons. If Quinn Ewer, or not Quinn Ewers, Malik Murphy wants to sit in the pocket and sling that ball to those receivers, those receivers just need to make sure they're getting open. If they can create that space and get open, Texas should be able to run away with this game. However, I'm actually going to call the upset here. Here's the reason why. Kansas State's a very disciplined football team. They're very good. And I believe that even though they haven't seen a lot of Malik Murphy on tape, they're going to apply a lot of pressure. They're going to make him uncomfortable. They're going to flush him out of the pocket. And I think they're going to do just enough to be able to upset Texas. Now, I think it's going to be a lower scoring game. The line's at 49 and a half. I'm actually going at 47 points this game. I think Kansas State wins this game 27 to 20, pulls off the upset in Austin. Texas fans, they get upset. You're sitting at 7 2, and you wonder, is Steve Sarkeesian the right coach? Listen, Steve Sarkeesian is the right coach. You're just running up against Kansas State and an opportunity where you probably, you should not be without your starting quarterback, right? If you have a starting quarterback in this game, Quinn Ewers, I picked Texas to win this game, and I don't think it's close. But I think Quinn Ewers is enough of a shift to say, hey, Kansas State, they have a really good defense. I think they can run the ball. I think they're going to test Texas in that area. Oklahoma sure did. And I think with the two-quarterback system, it's going to throw Texas off a little bit. I think it's going to make this defense do a lot of shifting. So I really like Kansas State in this game, 27 to 20. If you guys haven't already, make sure you're joining the discussion. Jump it down in the comments below, hitting that like, hitting that subscribe button. I want to see y'all score predictions. So join the discussion, drop those score predictions. Hey, you know what? We're going to preview Georgia-Missouri next.